So how are you? How's pandemic life treating you? Uh, it's been amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a, a blessing in, in, in many ways. I see a lot of positive things coming out of it. So. so I know there are a few exciting things that we can talk about, but I wanted to just first kind of start with um, the real world homecoming, which was amazing, by the way. How was that experience reuniting with the original castmates? And what was your kind of initial reaction when they pitched you the idea of a reunion? Uh, well, <clears throat> I was excited in the beginning um, to see everybody. Uh, I was unfortunate that I wasn't able to be in the same room with everyone. So, you know, that that takes away a lot of that face-to-face -face emotional content experience. So, you know, I had to virtually be brought into the room. So uh, wasn't wasn't a great experience uh, for me personally, uh, because I really value, um, you know, intimate, face-to-face, -face, authentic, emotional conversation. And so that wasn't able to happen. Um, but I don't know, I have a feeling that, that something will come back around in the future and, and we'll all be together at some point. Yeah, this may be corny, but I actually ended up crying when I was watching, when I realized that you weren't going to get to come into the original loft. I was so upset. I was like, no. I was so upset. Yeah. I feel like everyone was robbed of like, your hugs and your comfy sweater. <laughs> uh, that's sweet. Yeah, I was emotional too, uh, through a lot of it. I think all of us were. But yeah, I guess Great Creator had another plan. <laughs> Do you think you would consider like a mini reunion if the timing kind of worked out for you? Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm open to anything. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty easy. It's really interesting how those same conversations that were had during the original run are still so important and timely today. Was this your first time kind of rewatching the old clips from the show? Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the old clips from the show in in a long time. And now they're kind of, they're popping up everywhere. <laughs> Every day in my Instagram or somewhere, there's like, you know, somebody's posting something from way back when. So yeah, it's definitely, you know, fresh and, and, and in our faces, it seems like a lot hasn't changed, but I feel that that a lot has, you know, I, I think, you know, the topic is still there and the conversation is still the same. But I think a lot of people are are changing um, because of that. You know, it, it's helping people to really take uh, you know a good look at themselves and their fears and their judgments and you know where where they stand personally on these types of issues. I know some of it was dramatic, but there were some lighthearted clips. Did you enjoy? Was there anything you enjoyed most that you kind of got to relive again with the cast? Um. I'm not, for me, it's not really about one particular thing. It's just, it's about the, the whole experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I welcome and I'm open to all conversations and all different types of feelings and opinions. And I love to look at those things and talk about those things. Um, so the whole experience for me was really refreshing and, and I just see a lot more opportunity uh, in the future to come from it, like this conversation. So yeah, I think it's all, it's all positive. It's all good. Well, the great thing about the real world homecoming was kind of seeing how everyone changed and evolved over the years. Um, you've spoken before about kind of like your transformation and that journey that you've been on since your time on the show. Would you say that the real world kind of set you on this path that you were meant to take? Oh, absolutely. I, I talk about this often. Um, you know, it's, it now, we all have an opportunity because of social media and selfies and, and all those types of things, you know, but back in the day, 30 years ago, and we didn't have any of that. You know, if, if a camera was to follow you around for three months and film everything that you do and everything that you say, and it records all of your, your feelings and your opinions and your judgments and your fears and all that stuff, and then you get to go back and, and watch that, if, if it doesn't have an impact on, on your life, um, <laughs> you know, you're probably in a coma. So for me, you know, that was like my first real taste with spirituality. 
you know, people kind of, uh, they, they kind of flinch when they hear me say that. Um, but, but to me, because of, of this journey, I, I simply look at spirituality as looking at yourself. You know, it's not about a religion. Um, it's just about the experience that you have with yourself and the real world and reality TV uh, really uh, shined a spotlight on my life and my feelings and my emotions and all the experiences that I had. And, and I was very open to being vulnerable and, and share a lot of it. So it, I think that had a big, uh, a big part of it. You know, you can be presented with the opportunity uh, to be transparent and vulnerable, but if your judgments and your fears are too strong, uh, it's very, uh, very easily you can put a mask on, you know, and pretend, you know, to be something that you're not, or give the, you know, the audience, you know, something, you know, that's not authentic. But I think because of the our show and it was the first real world, uh, you know, we didn't have a reference, so. Um, we kind of came in there, you know, fully vulnerable and transparent because we had no idea what was going to happen. And I think you see that, you know, with the with the reaction uh, from some of my castmates and, and other castmates. You know, there's a lot of people that are very they're hesitant to go back into that world and to to share themselves in that way or expose themselves, expose their darkness or you know their shadow or, you know, their insecurities, uh, you know, it's not an easy world out there. There's a lot of people that are very opinionated and very judgmental and also not very nice. Uh, so uh, I think it takes a special kind of person to be able to, to exist in that world and navigate through it and be able to, you know, get something really positive out of it. Yeah, you posted something, I think the other day about um, reserving judgments. And I thought that was a, a really great thing, kind of like to challenge people to kind of listen to others and don't, you know, assume that you know what they're going through. I mean, if, if you are, you know, even just a little bit awake, and you're aware of what's happening on the world stage, you know, we're seeing more division, more separation, you know, more hatred, like in that world you know but there is another world that's going on right now of light and love and acceptance and truth um you know but those types of things are not obviously uh reported in the mainstream media you you have to dig for this stuff you have to dig for you know truth and ancient knowledge and um you know, spiritual modalities and things like that. So, but there's a reason for all of this. And um, that's what I, you know, earlier I was saying that there's, a, there's really a beautiful blessing that is coming out of the pandemic because now everybody is questioning everything. And that's the point of the post that I put out yesterday is that I find it very dangerous for people to engage in debates and conversations about things that they know nothing about. And so that's, that's why I see so much division and separation in the world right now is because you have people on the left or the right, whatever you wanna call it, you know, but it's like, you know, the left wing and the right wing are all a part of the same bird. So that's what that post was all about. But you're right, the doom and gloom can be very overwhelming. Um, mm -hmm. But the more important thing is that you're very he healthy and happy now, um, and a big part of your life now is health and wellness. And you get to travel all around the world, right, and doing your retreats that you get to share with others. Um, can you talk a little about your work there and why that's important to kind of share that experience? Yeah. Well, you know, 30 years ago, I, I started my own spiritual journey. I wanted to understand why I was feeling the way that I was feeling and my behavior patterns and you know where they came from and why do they exist and my beliefs and just my choices in life uh, in a, at an early age were were causing uh, suffering 
and pain in, within me. And so uh, when I was about 25 years old, I met my first teacher who was an eighth generation grandmaster of the Far East. And I lived with him for six years and trained in meditation and um, you know, herbs and detoxing, martial arts and types of things. Um, you know, I started to learn. I started to learn a lot about what's happening in the world. I started researching and studying a lot of different things. And so that kind of, um, you know, led me down this, this road of, of healing and, and transformation. And I just got really hungry for uh, knowledge to basically understand how to liberate myself from my own software. And so I started researching and studying masters, ascended masters, teachings that were uh, left behind thousands of years ago. I started fasting like they did and meditating like they did, you know, wanting to have my own personal experience of that information. And then some really amazing things started happening. The deeper that I would go into it, the more cleansing that I would do. And I did like a 43 day fast in the desert and um, started traveling around the world and, you know, sitting with monks in Tibet and meditating and chanting with them. Uh, and then I was introduced into plant medicine. And then I realized along the road that it's in giving that we receive. And I just saw a lot of lost souls. And so 15 years ago, 14 years ago, I created a program called The Beauty Way, which is a, a very uh, intensive transformational journey. And I would bring people out into the desert for three to four weeks and guide them through a life-changing experience with meditation and grounding and fasting and superfoods and breath work and mineral baths, um, saunas, and uh, help people to understand you know, why they behave the way they behave. Why do they react the way that they react? When they get triggered, emotionally triggered by loved ones, their spouse or whatever it is to help them to understand, you know, where those suppressed emotions are coming from. And so that's the work that I have been doing and that I'm doing now. And yeah, it's, um, I've been able to travel the world and see some really amazing, beautiful things, but more importantly, this understanding and this knowledge with other people to assist them in liberating themselves from their own suffering. I saw this quote you gave that um, I loved where you said, when you first walked onto the real world, you felt like Jasmine from Aladdin, but now you feel like the genie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm on, um, on, a, on a magic carpet. <laughs> Speaking of health and wellness, and this is a terrible segue, but I'm going to make it anyways. I saw it's recently... Um, online a list that fans had gotten together of former real world road rules challengers and you were actually this is real you were number one at the very top of the list of fan favorites that viewers voted or are hoping to see return for a future season of the challenge all-stars with the OG cast members was that ever something you think you would consider I was I did I was invited to go to the first one and I agreed to do it because Mark is a good friend of mine and Love him. and I yeah, and I know that he's, um, you know, he's behind organizing all of that, but the timing, well, there's a couple of factors that happened. Number one, I didn't have a passport. I lost my passport and I had to renew it. And then our homecoming show was the week before the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I was going to, I was going to do it. I was going to do the homecoming and then go right from the homecoming to the challenge but I didn't have a passport. They invited me to go to the second one, which I think is happening now, yeah. or it's happening in a couple of weeks or something. Um, they invited me and I said, yeah, I, I'm open to it, but they never got back to me. And I got busy 
because I'm here in Peru and I've been here for three months, you know, working with ayahuasca and hosting retreats. So maybe the third one, I, I don't know, we'll see. It, it has a lot to do with my schedule and timing and, and all of that, but I'm definitely open to doing it. Is there anyone that you would kind of be excited to reunite with? Um, well, I love hanging out with the big guy. Yeah. That's Mark. Um, we always exactly. have a good time. That's my brother. Um, you know, I really, I enjoy doing these things, you know, I, I enjoy meeting people from different walks of life who have different opinions and different styles. And so I'm always up for an experience and I just love doing stuff like this. So um, I, I don't think, you know, if I could say like one person in particular, it's for me, it's about the, the whole experience always. So you've spoken a lot recently about memories from the real world. Do you have any like fun or favorite memories from the challenge that kind of stick out after all these years? Well, I'm, I was, when I was younger, all I cared about was athletics and playing mm -hmm. sports and competition was my life. My brother and I, who was, my brother was four years older than me, was an incredible athlete, much bigger and stronger than I was. Um, so competition for me is like, then was, you know, burning <laughs> in my blood. So the challenge is for me, especially back then, I don't know, I probably would, you know, that innate fire that burns inside of me for competition, it will probably always be there. So I love that. It's like, in the core and the essence of, of who I am. I love being challenged like that, you know, physically and mentally. And they come up with some really creative things to do, which really tests your endurance and your agility, your balance. And, um, but I'm a little bit different nowadays <laughs> because of, you know, the journey that I've been on. So I don't have that hunger to go back and do it. When I think about going back and doing it, I actually, now I'm thinking about the conversations that I could have, you know, with people about where they are in their life and, you know, how has the real world and the road rules affected them emotionally, you know, and psychologically, you know, like where are they at? Um, those are the types of conversations and things I like to engage in now. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. For me, that's what made season one of All Stars so great. Because the more interesting part for me was the conversations and seeing everyone again and how people may have grown or evolved. It wasn't necessarily all about who had the biggest muscles. It just, it really made it an enjoyable watch. And I think that's why people enjoyed it so much. So I have to ask, do you still have the jump rope? <laughs> Now, I don't carry my jump rope around with me anymore. The reason why I had that jump rope is because I did these jump rope videos and I was trying to use that platform to promote the jump rope workout videos. Um, it didn't really work. So, oh. yeah. So now everybody remembers me from, you know, having that jump rope around my neck all the time. It's so funny. I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere. I don't know where it is in storage, probably. <laughs> Well, you've made quite an impact on people and you're responsible for many smiles. So I just wish you the best. And I'm just so thankful that we could have this conversation and just thank you for speaking with me today. Yeah, thank you. And may I ask, what is behind you? Oh, honestly, I think it's Hogwarts from <laughs> Harry Potter. I didn't know how to turn it off. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think. <laughs> no, I, I like it. And, and I love Harry Potter. I love magic. I'll def I'm going to start that campaign to get you on season three, because I'm telling you, give the people what they want. <laughs> we'll have to tell the Godfather right. to get it going. <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have a good feeling it, it'll happen. I'm not sure when, but it, I'm sure it will happen one yeah, day. It'll align when it's meant to. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And you'll win. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, have a wonderful day, and thank you so much, and many blessings to you on your journey.